Welcome to this tutorial where I will be showing you how to create this incredible terrarium trifle. So to make our terrarium trifle, the very first thing I'm going to do is to pipe our succulents. So I've got all of my buttercream coloured and ready to go filled into my piping bags together with the coupler sets um, inserted as well. This is my Swiss meringue buttercream recipe. I've included the free recipe in the description box below and I've coloured my buttercream with edible gel colours. So my first style of succulent we're going to pipe is a light mint green color. It's very pale. I've got a little bit of buttercream on my flower nail and I'm just placing a little square of baking parchment on there. Now without any tips at all, we're just going to pipe a big dollop of buttercream just like this, kind of like a cone shape. And then I've inserted a round number eight piping tip onto the end of this piping bag. And then I'm just going to pipe little balls like this. And we do want the little tail flicking out from each ball that we're piping. So we want it to look a little bit spiky. This is a very cute succulent and that's that. It's a very simple one. Now the next succulent that we're going to pipe is very similar in technique. I've got my 22 star nozzle placed into this piping bag and you can see here that I've just squeezed a huge dollop in the center like a cone straight up and then all around this we are going to go in with these little spikes piped all around that center cone. If you want to build it up a little bit taller you can just by placing a little bit more buttercream on top and it basically ends up looking like a very cute little Christmas tree. I've got two colors of buttercream in my piping bag. I've got a forest green color and a light leaf green. I've just mixed both colors of buttercream into my bag. When you squeeze it out, you get this lovely mixed color. Now our next succulent is slightly different. I've got some very, very dark forest green buttercream here. And only with the half of the coupler in the piping bag, I'm just going to go straight in with a very tall, drop shape in the center and then using a 104 rose petal tip with the thinner part of the tip on the outside and a thicker part in the center i'm just going to pipe these straight lines straight petals all the way down it's going to be these flaps that give us this incredible look for our succulent and you just want to go all the way around like this and then with a very small star nozzle, you want to have some red buttercream and just pipe that right on top, just a small little star blob on top. And then we want to pipe little white dots all over on the very tips of the flaps of the succulent. I've got white uncolored buttercream here with a two round nozzle. I'm just delicately piping small little dots all around and that's going to finish up this very cute succulent. And then we're going to do one last succulent style. It's going to be a bit more like a roughly style. I've got some grey buttercream with a tiny touch of pink buttercream in here as well. First we're going to do a very very flat mound just like this and with our petal 104 nozzle we're just going to do small rounded curved petals. I've got the thin part of the nozzle facing outwards and every time I pipe a new petal I just touch the bottom thicker part of the nozzle into the center mount of buttercream there. And that's just going to help all of the petals anchored onto our succulent. And so you can tell that I do things a layer at a time. And in between, if I feel there's too much buttercream building up on my tip, I just give it a wipe with a damp tea towel. So you'll notice also that I like to place the petals so that they're alternating with the petals underneath it in the previous layer. And this just helps it look a little bit more realistic. And as we move up as well, we're in our third layer of petals now, you can see that I'm making my piping of the petals a little bit smaller. They're a bit more curved and tighter. And I've got my piping tip turned a little bit more vertical 
Now, as I head towards the center, you can see there that it's gray with little flecks of pink because I've put a little bit of pink buttercream on the outer edges of one half of my piping bag. Now with all of the succulents, you can feel free to mix and match different colors. You don't have to do them the same colors that I've done. They're certainly not botanically correct. So long as you have really earthy tones and green tones, so some light greens, medium greens, dark greens, as well as maybe some greys and whites and even some pinks and reds, it looks great that way. So I've piped about two to four of each succulent style. I've done some smaller and some bigger and or some taller and some flatter in each style and I've just placed them all on a tray and I've popped them in the fridge to harden. Now whilst our succulents are hardening in the fridge we're going to start building our trifle. So the first layer is going to be a honeycomb and so this can be homemade or store-bought honeycomb and I'm just giving a good old bash so that it looks like stones and this is going to be the very bottom layer of our trifle and so this is just going to sit underneath there and provide some lovely crunch to our dessert. Now the next layer is going to be some really rich dark chocolate mud cake and so I like to break it up here so that it looks like soil but if you like you can leave them in bigger pieces just so that it's a little bit easier to serve later on when you scoop it out it's not too crumbly. This is dark chocolate mud cake. I've got a fantastic recipe in my description box below. It's very moist, it's very decadent, and it's just so good to be in a trifle like this. And so you can tell also that this just is so dark and it looks just like soil, and that is the look that we are going for. Now I like to just flatten it out a little bit because the next layer we're going to pour in is our chocolate mousse, and I do not want that dripping all the way down to the honeycomb. So if you can give the chocolate cake mixture a little bit of a flatten and pat down just to make sure it's compact and there's not too many holes where the mousse can run down to, that will be perfect. So this is a decadent, delicious chocolate mousse recipe and it's a really simple one to make. So I've got the recipe also in my description box below. I'm just also going to make sure that all of my layers are quite similar in thickness and so if you're not too sure you can always just eyeball it from the side and you can see whether all of your layers are matching up. Now after placing your chocolate mousse in there you want to pop this whole trifle into the fridge because you want that mousse to sit. Now the next thing we've got to do is to make our little rocks and pebbles. I've got some candy melts here. I've mixed some white and black candy melts to give me a grey coloured candy melt. And I have just melted this down in the microwave in one minute and then 30 second bursts until it's all lovely and liquidy. I've got some fruit here. I've got grapes and I've got strawberries and I'm just going to use toothpicks to dip them inside my melted candy melts. And every time I dip them, I just make sure they're fully covered and then I tap off the excess. And then I just plunge it into a foam dummy to set. If you don't want to use candy melts, you can also use white chocolate and you can just add a little tiny drop of black gel coloring or even better black powdered or oil based food coloring, which works perfectly for chocolate. And you can do them all one color. I prefer to do two tones just so that my whole terrarium looks a little bit more realistic. And I find it also great if you can use fruit that are different shapes and different sizes because it makes it look a lot more realistic when you have teeny tiny grapes or you can even use blueberries it just looks so cute when you put it all together later. So my chocolate mousse has been sitting in the fridge for about half an hour and I'm just going to finish off with my last layer of chocolate mud cake and I'm just going to crumble it up and place it all around the top as my top layer and it just looks like soil it's so cute and once we're finished with this layer we're just going to give it a little pat down and then we are going to place our succulents that we've prepared earlier on top and this is probably my favorite part of the whole process putting everything together i like to use food gloves for this as it helps when working with the buttercream succulents you don't want to handle them too much or for too long because they can lose their shape or start to melt if your hands are very warm 
And so I do find that sometimes the coloring from the buttercream succulents can transfer onto the fruit. So after handling the succulents, remember to wipe down your hands or your gloves before touching the chocolate or candy melt covered fruit. You just want to place all of your succulents in and around each other and with the stones as well. Just have fun with this. I like to place them in clusters, have some main clusters and then embellish and fill up with whatever I have left. I like to pair big stones with some little stones as well. It just makes it look a lot more natural and I want my terrarium to have a really nice full look on top but have a few spots that are just soil as well because it makes it look a little bit more realistic. And once you're finished placing all of your decorations on your trifle, it can actually be served straight away or you can place it in the fridge for a couple of hours before your event if you need to. So there you have it, this super cute terrarium trifle, perfect for Christmas or any other event or to present to a plant loving friend in your life. It's so delicious as well and just too pretty to eat. If you'd like to learn more cake decorating tutorials, jump on below to my description box. I've got all recipes and also a free cake decorating bundle full of incredible tutorials for you to sign up to. Thanks so much for watching. And if you want to see more tutorials on YouTube from me, remember to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to turn on notifications so you're not missing out on any new content. Catch you next time.